Okay, first of all, what is a profile? A profile is every single thing that you've done since day one of your undergraduate program, right? Every single thing like that includes your GPA, any tests you've written, any clubs you've joined, any papers you've published, any projects you've done, any competitions you took part in and so on, right? The number one thing that's important when it comes to building your profile is time, okay? So it takes time to build your profile. It's not something that you can build overnight or like one month before your master's degree or PhD degree application. The earlier you start building your profile, the better your profile is going to be and the higher your chances of getting into a top university. In this video, I want to talk about all the different elements that go into a profile and what are some of the most important elements and how you can build those elements. When it comes to your profile, I like to split it into two main categories, the core category and the auxiliary category. In the core category, we have your GPA, your GRE or GMAT or LSAT or any of these main important tests, your research or projects, your portfolio, you know, especially for arts and design architecture students, your statement of purpose and your letter of recommendation. In the auxiliary category, we have work experience, internships, entrepreneurship, online courses, volunteering, extracurriculars, awards and so on. In this video, what I want to do is I want to analyze all the core elements of our profile. The auxiliary elements are nice to have, but they're not the most valuable elements within your profile. So here's a deeper look at all the core elements that make up your profile. I know that some of you won't want to hear it, but yes, your GPA is one of the most important elements within your profile. Uh, the reason is, of course, that a higher GPA indicates a student with a stronger academic ability. But more than that, it's also about universities judging how well you'll be able to handle the rigor at their university. So if you are someone with a low GPA in your undergrad program, then that probably signals to the university that you won't be able to handle the rigor that they have at their graduate level programs. So the higher your GPA goes, the better a student that you are and the more likely your chances of getting admitted. Now I know what you guys are thinking, okay, what is a good GPA? The thing is there is no exact number that I can give you in order to you know, specify what is a good GPA because each university calculates GPA differently. What I can tell you is that if you are in the top 20 to 25% of your class, then that's a strong GPA. That's a good GPA that you can use to apply to college. If your GPA is not in that bracket, it's okay. You can make up for it using the other elements of your core profile. Now for these exams, the same rules apply as they did for the GPA. The higher, the better, obviously. If the university program says that it's required or at least recommended, then you should definitely take these exams. Now a good score for these tests will be in the top 20 to 25th percentile of all test takers. For the GRE, that will be around a 320. For the GMAT, that's around a 660. And for the LSAT, that's around 160 or so. So these exams are also a reflection of your academic ability and your reasoning skills and tells the admissions committee whether you'll be able to survive the rigor of their graduate program. First of all, what is a project? Right? A project is any kind of long-term task with a goal in mind, right? So examples of projects could be maybe you're inventing something new or maybe you're um, redoing an experiment with different conditions and trying to see, you know, try to find new answers. Maybe you're conducting a survey across all people and, you know, trying to figure out, um, trying to basically document the human behavior and so on. Now, what separates research work from projects is the publication, right? So if you are able to do a project and then you submit it towards like a conference or a journal, and then they say, like they say, they look at the work and they're like, okay, this is a good project. We're going to publish it in our publication or conference, journal, so on, right? So that's basically like a stamp of approval, right? They're officially saying that, hey, your research project or your project is solid enough and you know, it progresses science forward and we are giving our approval on it. Right, so always research publications are going to be more valuable than projects. If you're applying for a research-based program, that means a master's by research or a PhD program, then research is critical towards your application. If you're applying for a master's by coursework program, then research is optional. Right? If, as long as you have projects, that's good enough. But of course, research is always going to be more valuable than projects simply because of that stamp of approval. So the kind of research work that you need to do, again, really depends on your stream. 
The best people to ask about research are your professors. This is like their favorite topic. So make sure you approach a professor if you want to do research. Just tell them, hey, I want to do some research. And then they'll sit you down for half an hour and explain the entire process to you. Next up is your portfolio. So again, this is going to be for students applying to art programs, architecture program, design, photography, and so on. Essentially, you'll be asked to submit your work in the form of like a portfolio, and then they'll judge your abilities based on the quality of that work. Now, it's really hard to assign a numeric value to, as to the quality of some work. So what you can do is you can approach your professors and ask them to evaluate your portfolio, right? Since they've evaluated so much, so many different portfolios before, they can sort of tell you where you need to improve and how you can improve with that. Next up, we have the statement of purpose, right? The statement of purpose is an essay that you submit to the college when you guys are applying for pretty much any graduate level program. The statement of purpose is special because it's the only place in the entire application where the admissions committee can see who you are as a person, right? See your motivations for applying for this degree, why you chose that university, why you want a degree, what your career aspirations are, and so on. So you have to make sure that you have a solid SOP when you're applying to college. Now, I don't want to get into too many SOP details here. I have a free SOP webinar. I'll give you guys a link in the description. If you, if you guys are writing your SOP, definitely go check out that webinar. It's going to be super useful. The last core element of your profile is your letter of recommendation. So graduate schools generally require two to three letters of recommendation. They can be from your professor or from your manager or from a peer. Again, it depends on the school. This is the only part of the application that you have limited control over because as long as you are not actually writing the letter and submitting it by yourself, then you have limited control over it, right? This means that the person writing the letter for you can say pretty much whatever they want about you in that letter. Right? The LOR is important because it's the only place in the application where they can get a third person point of view of who you are. So you can have great grades, a great GRE score, great projects, but then your letter of recommendation says that you're a difficult person to work with, then that's not going to bode well for your application. So in order to get a strong LOR, make sure you have strong relationships with your professors and tell them early about your graduate degree plans. So these are the six core elements of your graduate degree profile. These are the elements that's going to have the most impact on your application. As I said in the beginning of this video, the key to maximizing these elements is time, right? You need time to get a good GRE score. You need time to write your SOP and so on, right? The other auxiliary elements are nice to have, like online courses, work experience. These are all nice additions to your profile, but they're not the core elements. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video helped you in any way, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more graduate program related content. That's it from me for now and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.